Unlike voltage and amperage, there should be absolutely no current flowing through a circuit to measure resistance or ohms. It'll damage your meter. The meter supplies its own current to perform this measurement. And so we're going to get prepared here to take some resistance readings. And the first thing that we want to make sure is that there's no voltage going on in the timer. And we're going to take our multimeter and change it to the resistance setting. And that's the little Greek omega symbol. So if you are dealing with an analog meter, you might have to start the process by touching the leads together to zero your meter out. With a digital multimeter, it's not necessary, but I would definitely check your instructions to see if they'd like for you to do it, just to make sure that you're getting an accurate reading. Every little multimeter has its own little idiosyncrasies that you've got to be aware of. One thing that should be mentioned is that normally polarity doesn't matter, but if you're attempting to measure the resistance in a circuit inside your timer, then you're going to have to make sure that you check both directions. If there are any diodes in the circuit, diodes have a one-way direction of flow, so polarity does matter there. So if you're not getting the readings that you expect, you may want to just reverse the polarity of your leads and see what happens. Now, what I do when I start off a troubleshoot at the timer is I just take a moment and do a quick resistance check of all of the circuits. So we're going to start off by taking a parallel reading of all of the circuits on the timer. So you can start off by touching your leads to each one of the circuits. And there we go. On zone number two, I'm picking up about 55 and a half ohms. But I always make sure that I go ahead and touch my leads to every one of the circuits just to make sure that all the readings are at least the same or what we're expecting them to be. And what happens when we take a reading in parallel on a complete circuit like this, not only are you measuring the circuit that goes out into the field for the valve, but you're also measuring the circuit inside the timer. So just a quick check through those will give you some initial readings, but then you might need to isolate the circuits to get a more accurate reading. So what I've done is disconnected the wires for zone number two, and we're going to take a series reading of the resistance in this circuit. So now that we've disconnected the wires, we've isolated the circuit that's going out to the valve from the circuit that's in the timer. So now we're taking a reading of 55.6, and that's almost exactly the same as the reading that we took before. And really, there's very little resistance in here. Sometimes it's less than an ohm or two. And since, for our example here, I've got a Toro valve wired up, but it's only about two feet away from the timer, so there's no real resistance to read there. But what we're reading is the circuit in series. And if we needed to, if that's not giving us the answer that we're looking for, we can go back and then read the resistance of that circuit in parallel as well. So what we're getting here is just a very small reading from this circuit, so that's not our problem. But you can take and do this type of reading both at the valve or at the timer, 